So I want to take a little bit of time today to talk about anxiety, anxiety disorder, feeling overwhelmed, um, how to deal with the pressure and emotional, I guess, equilibrium that we all have to sort of self-organize every day. Definitely, this is something I have personally struggled with for many years. I have always um, had a lot of anxiety. I've always struggled to manage my anxiety. Um, I do so completely without any pharmaceutical assistance, uh, so no drugs that I'm taking to, to, to help manage that anxiety. But in the past, I have, um, in my younger years, had to use things like you know, Paxil, something like that. Now, what is anxiety? How does it manifest? How does it affect our lives? Um, it's that overwhelming feeling. I think that just you, you don't have control over your own mind, that you have racing thoughts, you don't feel safe. I think safety is probably the underlying um, trigger or the underlying feeling that pro provokes anxiety. And we feel this way because we feel ungrounded. We don't feel like we have the pieces of our lives put together that create that safe cocoon to exist in. Um, I know for myself, coming from a broken family when I was younger, really not feeling that I was tethered to anything um, and not understanding the way that the world worked in terms of that safe family unit gave rise to extreme levels of anxiety for myself throughout my life. And so I had to come up with ways of coping with my anxiety that were useful and tried to stay away from some of the things that my anxiety would maybe pull me into that were negative coping mechanisms. So what do I mean by this? Um, in terms of when I would get a panic attack or if I get a panic attack or if I'm feeling extreme amounts of anxiety, in that moment, what I really try to do is look at my thoughts. So really dissect each and every one of my thoughts. It can be very much or I feel like it's like this pressure is building up. It's it's overwhelming. It's like this fight or flight. I know that's how science will kind of explain it, but for me, it's just like this overwhelming, overwhelming feeling of like wanting to jump out of my skin. Like I just, I can't breathe. I don't know where to turn. My thoughts are racing. I'm not making good decisions. Um, and again, sometimes these things happen when we feel like we're living in a world with tremendous pressure and not a lot of safety or not a lot of soft places to land, if that makes sense. And when you're living like this, in this perpetual state of, you know, very high octane production in terms of, you know, having to execute, be almost robotic, it can be difficult. I know myself i've really had to grapple with and really have had to start understanding that the way that society is set up for us in the modern era is not conducive to the vehicle that we have what do i mean by that i mean we are not set up in a human body to be able to deal with the mass amounts of stimulation that we see daily and the extensive output that we are expected to be able to assimilate in our modern era, it is just not the way we are designed. If you go back to cottage industries where people would you know, be sitting, knitting, making quilts, I don't, you know, carpentry, whatever it was a hundred years ago, information moved much slower. Production moved much slower. The pace was livable, if that makes sense. And so what I really, really wish that people would understand, and I mean the older generations, 
the sort of middle generations, those of us that are raising children. I'm, I personally don't have children, but I own schools, so I deal with young people all the time. Um, and the younger generation, specifically because I am so extremely hopeful, but still worried about the world that they are inheriting. And the thing about it is, is that with the pressure that we put on the individual to be a producer, to create something in terms of a business or, you know, having a stable home, having all of these pieces that are required to just exist as a human being is overwhelming. It is so difficult for young people, especially if they didn't come from an affluent family, to be able to figure out how to buy a house, a car, things are so expensive. Yes, you can go to university and work like crazy and you know get this degree and be able to uh, get a job, right? Um, but are you happy in that job? It's, it's like this perpetual cycle that we're continually forcing ourselves to do these things that are supposed to get us to some finish line that's maybe eventually gonna make us happy, but we're going so fast that we never have a chance to feel happy. There's not that breathing room. There's not that ability to just exist and also to deal with a bit of the messiness of being a human being. Like, that's why so many people want to escape nowadays because it's just like when you have a continual barrage of social media where people are living this lifestyle, you know, this fancy lifestyle, everything is very glamorous, everything seems to be very glossy on the outside, but that lifestyle is also very, very expensive and then you have to factor in how do you get that lifestyle, right? It's just, to me, it just seems like such a, a, such a tremendous amount of pressure for the individual to be able to achieve those things and not only to achieve them, but to create happiness while they're achieving them. Because again, it's that 1% or that 0.5% of the population that can push themselves to really conquer whether it's entrepreneurialism or whatever it is, but it comes at a cost. Like it comes at such a cost. So what's the right way? I mean, I know myself, I have sacrificed everything to get where I am, but I was always waiting for like that time when I would allow myself to be happy. Like once I finally arrived, I'm going to be happy, but then there's always that next push, that next level that, you know, you have to be, you have to keep up that persona of success. And it's, it's difficult. It's just the tremendous amount of effort that it requires for the average individual, especially somebody like myself that didn't come from having anything in the beginning, the tremendous amount of effort that you have to put in to be able to get to where you want to go you can't have a balance. You just can't, it, there, it's not possible to get ahead or wherever this ahead place is and have a balance within your life. It just doesn't really exist. And then you end up with all of these entrepreneurs who are successful that have the glossy lifestyle, but they're overworked, they're overwhelmed, they're depressed, they're anxious, they're disconnected and society is suffering from that structure. It's not a good structure down the road because again, it's like that we're creating so much brokenness, so much brokenness. And what do I mean by we're creating so much brokenness? So if you look at families, okay, especially the family that my parents, they're great people. I'm not saying anything, you know, that that they did anything specifically wrong. They were chasing the American dream. They wanted to be, you know, my father wanted to be an entrepreneur. He worked and worked and worked and worked. And, you know, now we really don't talk to each other that much, but, 
and my mom had to, you know, they got a divorce. My mom had to work just to be able to put food on our table. She wasn't able to be that nurturing stay at home mom that kids need. And so our society has through consumerism forced us to want to have things instead of loving the people around us and cherishing the people around us and really creating safety within a family and having that balanced principle between what the masculine does and what the feminine does. And you, what I've seen is that so many women, and I mean, I can speak specifically because I work around a lot of women entrepreneurs um, and I am one. So many women have had to force themselves to become or to push themselves into a very masculine role, a very masculine mindset because we don't feel safe. And part of that comes from the fact that there are years, millennia, like of abuse towards women because women weren't seen as valuable. We weren't able to vote. We were, you know, all of these things that society set up to make women second class citizens for so long that when we finally got out of oppression, even though the oppression still exists, you have all of these ideologies, okay? These ideologies have been pushed on the masculine feminine principle for, you know, all of recorded history. Okay, so now we're starting to see some equality in terms of women can work for themselves, we can create a future for ourselves, but we're still dealing with all of that previous history where we weren't, in most cases, women weren't treated that well. Women weren't honored, women weren't um, elevated or cared for. It was more so, and I'm only saying this because I've talked to people, older women in the community, I've talked about relationships and I've, you know, it was very clear to me that women were there to serve men. Women were there to make sure that, you know, what, whatever a man said, cook, you know, they wanted a meal cooked, they want their house clean, they want this, that, you had to jump to it as a woman. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot of like attention paid to, um, to protecting the female spirit and, and making a woman feel safe and guarded and protected. I, I don't know any other way to put it. And I'm not saying that the relationships don't exist out there where men are extremely wonderful to their women. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that the majority of history, throughout history, it's been very imbalanced and women have been really treated poorly. And then you have this period in the last, you know, 100 years maybe, you know, give or take, obviously it was a slow move towards this, but where we have been able to take care of ourselves, be totally self-sufficient, earn our own incomes, etc., etc., And that's great, but I don't know how much it was actually wanted by the men. You know, we won the ability to vote. We won the ability to stand on our own two feet, but there's still that mechanism within the societal matrix where men want to dominate women, men want to control them, men want, to, they still want that perceived control that they've had and it's not even their fault. I mean, it's been inbred to them, inbred into them throughout recorded history to be able to treat women this way or to look down on women. And so how do we travel this path of really creating equality? So how do we really travel this path of creating equality, but also creating safety so that a woman can feel safe anywhere she goes in society and have experienced this my entire life. Do not feel safe to walk around the streets on my own, like in the daytime sometimes, but in terms of like, that's not something any being should ever feel. You should never have to question to walk outside of your front door and feel afraid that's ludicrous like why do we live in a world where people should be afraid of anything or you know why should we feel fear within our own homes like 
Why is there violence? That's what I don't understand. Like, it's not necessary. It, it's just a small change in the way that we think. It's, it's a change in perception to kindness, to lack of attack, to um, honoring others and not, yeah, not wanting to take from others. It's, it's a simple, simple shift in our ideologies. And so, you know, back to our triggers and anxiety and, you know, what, what we can do about managing these things. I think it really comes down to, to some degree, we have to admit that some of it is not 100% manageable in our modern society, that there are some broken things. When we are expected to work at a pace that is ridiculously fast, okay? So we're dealing with artificial intelligence, computers, cell phones, customer service, you know, large amounts of information that needs to be processed very, very quickly. It can be done, absolutely. Can a human being sit there and completely create a robotic existence for themselves that is very, detached from others where it is just about you know really working and very little else yes we can create that yes we can do that it, it doesn't yield a lot of happiness but then we have to question why you know why are we doing this why are we working so hard to get a bunch of stuff that's supposed to make us feel like we're good enough to exist just seems crazy to me. It seems totally crazy. We should be able to be free enough to be happy enough that just within our own existence of waking up in the morning and experiencing life, that should be enough. We should be enough. And when do we arrive? Like, when do we get to that point where we say, you know what? I'm good enough. I've arrived, I love myself, I am I feel safe, I'm worthy of, it's just such like a hamster wheel of this perpetual cycle. And so why am I talking about this? Because I think people feel it. You know, I think people, there's so much insecurity in every human being in terms of self-love, being loved, how do you, experience that frequency how do you experience that safety of love and completeness when you live in a world that seems to be so divergent from that and my only real response to that is connection authenticity honesty um, vulnerability you have to be able to open up if you don't, if you're not able to open up and be your true self to others and feel safe to be your true self to others, you're going to continually descend into a place of darkness and fear and incompleteness. 